video on why I chose the Zenith 750 Cruiser by Zenith Aircraft. Uh, we're gonna have to do a whole nother video on why I'm building an airplane and why I want to own an experimental aircraft. That's a whole other subject, um, probably worth exploring in its own video. Uh, I spent a ton, a ton of time doing research and probably could have done research for years. Um, sometimes it's better to just jump off a cliff. So I gave myself until September 1st uh, last year to decide on what aircraft to actually build. Um, I considered a number of other airplanes and, and none of these uh, are endorsements or are ripping on any of these planes. Um, I'm just sharing my decision process for my current situation. Uh, I'd actually be very happy with most of the airplanes I've outlined here. Uh, the first one on the list, um, obviously, uh, was Vans Aircraft um, RV7 and 8. Uh, I love both those airplanes. I, I know a number of people who have 6s, 7s, and 8s, and um, pretty much everybody pretty much everybody that I know that actually built their six, seven, or eight spent uh, several thousand hours. Uh, my favorite RV7 in the area, uh, by, uh, done by a friend of mine, he said he has about 3,000 hours into the plane. And I was super concerned that I would not actually finish what I started. There are definitely airplanes that I will consider in the future. Uh, I can't imagine this will be the only airplane that I build. It seems like one of those things you just kind of get deeper and deeper into. So I looked at the Vans RV12, uh, serious consideration there. Uh, I'm not really sure why I didn't end up going um, with the RV. It, it just seemed like, um, I don't know, maybe it was just a gut feeling. Uh, I think I'd be very happy with an RV12. I know a lot of people who like them um, and it seems like a really great airplane. Uh, not a great reason to not pick that plane. Um, it just didn't end up making my, uh, my end list. Um, Sonics aircraft was one that I um, may actually eventually build a Sonics. Uh, for me, a serious consideration is my size. I'm a really big guy. I have very, very broad shoulders in your case you can't tell. Um, the other thing is um, I have um, somewhat of a difficult time sometimes getting in and out of aircraft. Uh, if you don't know me personally, I have 13 vertebrae in my spine that are fused together. So while your spine flexes like a like a cool spring, mine is like one solid bone uh, with a couple vertebrae in my neck and then some of my lower spine that actually moves. So sometimes I have a hard time getting in and out of a plane. Um, so I was a little bit worried. Now I haven't actually sat in a Sonics. I haven't ridden in one. It seemed a little bit tight in the cockpit without actually having been in one. Uh, like I said, I may st still consider that as a, as a plane to build in the future because I really like the idea of the, of the plane. Um, I love the, the company. I love some of the innovation that they seem like they're pushing. So it really came down to perceived comfort for my large frame. Uh, and it is just perception. Um, I look very briefly at Just Aircraft. Um, they are not too far from here. I have a good friend who built one of those. Um, I think it just doesn't fit my mission very well. Um, I've always had a warm place in my heart for um, the Long Easy. Another airplane that um, everybody that looked at me and then knew anything about a Long Easy said, boy, you're going to probably need narrower shoulders or have to make the cockpit wider in order to comfortably fit into that. Um, so that one kind of came off the table. And then that brings us to Zenith Aircraft. Uh, Zenith has three models that I seriously considered. The Zenith 650, which has been around for a while. It's their low-wing model, um, the current low-wing two-place airplane. It's um, considerably faster than the plane that I'm building. Um, I'm not really sure why, well, I mean, I, I actually went, I flip-flopped quite a few times on building a 650 or a 750. I ended up on the 750 just because it just felt right, I think, uh, in the end between the two. So then it gets us to the Xena 750. Uh, there are two models of the 750. There's the Stoll model, which for non-airplane people stands for short takeoff and landing. Um, that airplane is, has been around for a while. That's the airplane that the airplane I'm building is based on. Um, it wins a lot of short takeoff and landing competitions. Um, it's not uncommon to see a configuration where the plane can take off and land in 100 feet, which is basically in my backyard. While really cool, you do sacrifice something in, in a uh, short takeoff and landing, mostly in cruise speed. The, the 
Xena 750 cruiser that I'm building is based on that same airplane. It's almost the same airplane. They just made some changes, design changes to it to make it faster. And in then in that you sacrifice some short takeoff and landing capability um, and you trade that for speed. The cruiser's, you know, somewhere around 25 miles an hour faster, which in a, you know, in a long six, seven, eight hour trip uh, adds up to a couple hours of flight time difference. The, the, the bottom line really is, and everybody that, that I consulted with when I was picking an airplane told me to do was make sure that I pick an airplane that fits my mission. My mission 80% of the time. Um, I should note that I do belong to a local flying club. We have two Cessna 172s and two Cessna 182s. Those are four-place airplanes. Well, the 172 is really a three-place airplane with four seats. I do have access, actually very easy access, to two Cessna 182s. So if I need to carry four people and a couple golf bags, although I don't golf, so four people and a bunch of fishing gear or camping gear, I do have easy access to um, a four-place airplane. Since my kids are grown, uh, we really, Julie and I sat down and, and really decided that two seat uh, airplane was probably more economical and probably fit about 85% of our mission. So um, we were definitely narrowed down to two place airplanes. Um, so in my mission, there was really two things that were really, really important. Um, the first was it needs to be easy-ish easy-ish to fly um, and it needs to be super versatile and the 750 cruiser um, now I haven't been in one so I, I'm just going by YouTube videos and and talking with people and and really analyzing the design um, I think it's gonna be a, a pretty easy airplane to fly it lands nice and slow um, and it's really versatile now it's not the stole aircraft but by small aircraft standards it's still a very short takeoff and landing aircraft. The book says um, 350 feet um, landing and takeoff. I mean, that's probably, uh, that's probably maybe not too conservative of a number, but even at 500 feet, it's pretty short takeoff and landing. You can get in and out just about anywhere um, with this airplane. So while I picked up 25 miles an hour um, over the stole airplane, I didn't really sacrifice a whole lot of, of short takeoff and landing capability. And the other thing is that it has a ton of baggage room in the back uh, for things like um, Julia and I are pretty notorious for throwing a couple sleeping bags in a tent um, to take an off for the weekend. So um, this is the kind of an airplane that will accommodate uh, those kind of things really easily. Um, the other thing that was for me, and it wasn't for Julie, and I, and I did um, consult her about this, she was very open to a tandem seat airplane. Um, I wanted a side-by-side -side airplane, that way we can talk easily um, on a long cruise flight. And um, I just felt like side-by-side -side seating was better for cruising. So the next thing on my list was I wanted an airplane that's easy to get in and out of. Um, I talked a little bit about my, my non-flexibility situation. So this is an airplane where you can kind of just scoot up to it and, and you know, put your butt on the seat and, and climb in. And, or just kind of swing your feet over into the airplane and it's really easy to get in and out of. It has a lot of engine options. The 750, both 750s and the 650 all share the same firewall. So all the people that have built 650s and both 750s are all sharing information about how they picked an engine and how they routed all the stuff for the engine, um, including fuel system and all that kind of thing. So they share uh, common configuration, which is nice because you get kind of the, the economy of numbers there. Um, it has terrific, terrific visibility. There's a great 360 video on the 360 degree panoramic video on the Zenith website that uh, that shows off the, the real, really great visibility inside the cockpit of this airplane. Next thing was it needed to be all metal. And I think all, all of the aircraft that I considered except for the Long Easy and the Just aircraft were all metal designs. I don't have anything against fiberglass or tube and fabric airplanes. I just felt like um, as somebody who's never done a big project like this before, I felt most comfortable with metal. Uh, I didn't have any experience doing this kind of project before, and I felt like, um, not that I don't think that, that I can learn other things, I just feel like um, I could get a, an all-metal aircraft, or at least get my mind out of a, around an a all-metal aircraft. Building an airplane feels a little bit like when you first learn to fly. It feels like you're drinking from a fire hose. And um, this this kind of airplane, this particular airplane, has a number of characteristics about it that make it um, a little bit smaller of a fire hose to drink from. Um, so the all metal, it has blind rivets. So some rivets that are flush mounted, 
you need two people to actually drive them. So someone's got to actually buck the rivet on the back while the person, while another person drives it from the front. Um, this particular airplane and the Sonics and the RV-12, and, and I'm sure there are a lot of others, um, use what are called blind rivets. And this is, this is a kind of rivet that you just push in through the front and you can pull it with one person. Um, it ends up not being a flush rivet, so it slows the airplane down because there's rivet heads that are in the airstream which cause drag, but I thought it was a good trade-off. So the other thing that was really, really important and, and, and maybe one of, the, one of the really key things for me was um, this was simple tools, a lot of the work in the kit is done for you, and I felt like I could actually finish it. So I end up with an airplane that meets almost all of my, pretty much all of my mission requirements, and it's in a package that I could actually finish the kit. Uh, we're talking about a project that will be a year or two in the making. Some people, it takes 10. When I started the project, I mean, I have a day job. So I wanted a project that I thought I could actually finish with a reasonable amount of work, 5, 10, 15 hours a week in one to two years. Uh, I, I didn't want to lose momentum behind it. I didn't want to lose enthusiasm as I was building the kit, especially since this is my first one and I wasn't even sure if I was going to like building. Uh, it turns out that I do, and I'm trying to actually not build quickly and enjoy the process of building uh, along the way. That's my criteria for how I came to the decision to build a Zenith 750 Cruiser. Um, I am buying the kit in pieces, so I did not buy the whole kit all at once. Um, that was actually another consideration. I'm trying really, really hard not to borrow money to build the airplane. I figure by the time I'm finished, it will be in the forty dollars to $50,000 range. Um, so I can buy, like for example, I bought the tail kit first, which was a couple thousand dollars, and then I bought the fuselage kit, which was a couple more than a couple thousand dollars for the fuselage kit so you can buy it in pieces and that allowed me to raise the money as I was building it um, and in hopes of anyway kind of pushing back the um, financing of the airplane. I hope that was helpful. Check out the comments below and uh, click subscribe. Have a great day.